Long polling, server sent events, web sockets, and quick, quick UDP internet connections are all different techniques for facilitating data exchange between two machines. Each has its own unique approach and ideal use cases. Let's jump in and explore each method and determine when's best to use them. So what is long polling? So long polling is a web communication technique where the client makes a HTTP request to the server and the server keeps the request open until it is new information to send back to the client or a timeout occurs. So it works by having the client send a HTTP request to the server. The server will then hold that request open until new data is available or a timeout occurs. Once the server has data, it will then send a response to the client. This completes the original request response cycle and the connection is closed. The client will then immediately send another request after receiving the response, which will then restart the entire process. Looking at a quick demo here, we have a simple express server that has two endpoints. So we have the poll endpoint. So this will register clients for long polling and assigning each one a unique client ID. And the client's response is stored until a message is sent or the connection is closed. We also have this update endpoint, which will send a message to all registered registered clients and closes their connection once the message is delivered. The client is just some simple HTML and JavaScript that makes a request to the poll endpoint. And so when a message it receives, it displays it on the page and then immediately recalls the poll endpoint again to reestablish the connection. So to start the server, we're going to run node server.js. So now we've got the server running on port 3000. So if we refresh our page, we have our long polling example. And then if I open up another terminal and send a curl request, so this is going to send it to the update endpoint and just send a simple message of hello client. So what we'll see there is that the hello client appears on the page. And then we also have the poll endpoint called as we are now re-establishing that connection. And don't worry, the code for all this is linked in a repo in the description. So common use cases include monitoring systems. So it's ideal for periodically checking for updates like server or network monitoring tools, as well as data synchronization. So it's suitable for infrequent data updates, such as syncing user statuses or calendar events. The advantages include compatibility as it works with existing HTTP infrastructure, making it easy to implement without special protocols or libraries. It's simplicity, so it's easier to implement and understand compared to more complex protocols, as well as fallback options. So you can serve it as a fallback option for real-time communication in environments where web sockets or server sent events are not supported. The disadvantages include higher latencies compared to web sockets or server sent events, as a new request must be initiated after each response. There's increased HTTP overhead due to frequent requests and response cycles. And there's also scalability issues as it can put significant load on the server, especially with a large number of clients. So now looking at server sent events, Server sent events is a unidirectional communication protocol that allows the server to push updates to the client over a HTTP connection. And so it works by having the client establish a HTTP connection to the server, and it will then subscribe to a particular event stream. This can be done by creating an instance of the event source object in JavaScript. This object takes the URL of the server's event stream as a parameter. The server will then send updates to the client as events occur, you typically using a text-based format, something like UTF-8 encoded. This connection will remain open as long as the client is subscribed and the server is sending events. And so looking at another demo here, we've got a simple express server that has an events endpoint, which opens a server sent events connection. The server sends a new message with the current time every second using the res.write. This connection is kept open indefinitely until the client closes it. When the client disconnects, the server will then clear the interval and close the connection. And then again, the client will simply just append the messages when it receives them to the document. So to start the server, we'll say node server.js. So that will start the server on port 3000. So if you refresh our page, so you can see if we go over to our network tab and go into our events, we can see here we have an event stream where every Second, we are getting events sent from the server to the client. And obviously this is unidirectional, so the server can only send to the client. We'll have to open up a connection on a new channel if we want to send from the client to the server. Use cases for server sent events include live feeds. So these are ideal for applications displaying live updates, such as news tickers or financial data dashboards, as well as progress updates. So it's useful for providing real time updates on long running server side processes, such as file uploads or data processing tasks. The advantages include simplicity as it's easy to implement with native browser support through the event source API, as well as efficiency as there's lower overhead compared to long polling as the connection remains open. And there's also automatic reconnection so the client can automatically reconnect if the connection is dropped. The disadvantages includes it's unidirectional so communication is server to client only for bidirectional communication, another channel must be used. 
browser support, so while it's widely supported, some older browsers or specific environments may not support server sent events. And then finally, the scalability issues. So server sent events uses a single TCP connection per client, which can be limiting in scenarios with a large number of clients. Next, we have WebSockets. So WebSockets is a protocol that provides full duplex communication channels over a single long-lived TCP connection, allowing real-time bidirectional communication between a client and a server. So it works with the client initiating a WebSocket handshake, which is a HTTP P request upgraded to a WebSocket connection, and this is done by including specific headers. Once established, the connection allows both client and server to send and receive messages in real time without the overhead of HTTP. The connection remains open and either side can close it when the communication is no longer needed. We have an express HTTP server that serves a static file via port 3000. And then we also have a WebSocket server that runs on port 3001, and that will handle the WebSocket connections. And so when a client connects, the server listens for incoming messages and broadcasts them to all the connected clients. Additionally, the server will also send a ping from the server message to every client every second as a keep alive message. The client, on the other hand, will use the WebSocket API to connect to the WebSocket server on port 3001. And it can also listen for form submissions to send messages to the WebSocket server. And then messages from the server are received and displayed in the page in real time. So we'll start the server with node server JS. So again, we've got our WebSocket server on port 3001 and our HTTP server on port 3000. So if we serve the static file, what you'll see here in our network, you can see we have a local host, we have our messages or receiving our messages from the server. And then we can also send a message from the client. So you can see we've received the server has received a message from the client, we can send another one. And so this is the whole thing with WebSockets. It's bi-directional communication. The server can communicate with the client. The client can communicate with the server. Use cases include real-time messaging applications. So WebSockets enable real-time bi-directional communication. So you could think of something like Discord. And then it also could be used for live notification and updates. And so they are used for pushing live updates to users' interfaces. So think of something like Notion. The advantages of WebSockets include low latency, so there's near real-time communication with minimal latency. It's bi-directional, so it allows for two-way communication, enabling interactive applications, and it's efficiency, so there's less overhead than HTTP-based solutions as the connection is maintained with minimal handshaking. The disadvantages include complexity, so it's more complex to implement and manage than simpler protocols like server sent events and long polling as well as firewall and proxy issues. So some firewalls and proxies might block or interfere with WebSocket connections. And finally, there's scalability issue. Managing many WebSocket connections can be challenging for servers. And then finally, we have QUIC. So QUIC stands for Quick UDP Internet Connections, is a transport layer network protocol initially developed by Google and designed to improve the performance of HTTP2 and HTTP3 by running over UDP rather than TCP. So how does it work? So Quick combines the features of TCP, TLS, and HTTP2 into a single protocol. It establishes a secure and reliable connection over UDP. It allows multiple streams of data to be multiplex, reducing latency and improving load times. And so Quick handles packet loss more efficiently than TCP, avoiding head of line blocking and enabling faster recovery. Use cases of Quick include accelerated web browsing. So Quick improves the performance of web browsing by reducing connection establishment time, supporting multiplex connections without head of line blocking and decreasing latency. So for example, Uber has adopted Quick to enhance responsiveness, which allows for quicker updates of driver locations, availability, and ride status. This significantly improves performance, particularly in areas with poor connections. So there's a great Uber engineering blog of their use of Quick, which I've linked below. Advantages of Quick include performance, so there's improved speed and lower latency compared to TCP, especially in poor network conditions. There's security, as there's built-in encryption with TLS, by default enhancing security. And it also supports connection migration, allowing ongoing sessions to continue even if the client's IP address changes. So for example, switching from Wi-Fi to cellular. The disadvantages include complexity, as it's more complex to implement than traditional TCP, requiring specialized libraries and support. As it's built on UDP, there are limitations, including some networks that restrict or block UDP traffic may prevent Quick from functioning properly, as well as just adoption issues. So while it is growing, Quick is still newer and less widely adopted than traditional protocols like TCP. So in summary, long polling is a web communication technique 
where the client makes a HTTP request to the server and the server keeps the request open until it has new information available to send back to the client or a timeout occurs. Server sent events is a unidirectional protocol where the server continuously pushes updates to the client over a single long lived HTTP connection. WebSockets is a full duplex communication protocol that establishes continuous bi-directional data exchange between a client and server over a single persistent connection. And then finally, there's QUIC, which is a transport layer protocol built on UDP, designed to provide faster, more reliable connections with lower latency and better performance, especially for web and real-time applications. If you got any value out of this, please like and subscribe and share it with friends. It helps the channel out a lot. Also, if you want the most up-to-date technical interview questions, be sure to check out techprep.app, and I will see you in the next one.